Today we're going to be covering a variety of topics, including in-context modeling, path mates, and rack and pinion mates, in order to make this spooling rope assembly in SOLIDWORKS. But before we get started, welcome to Sketch Model Build, your go-to channel for SOLIDWORKS CAD instruction and making. Before we get started, I want to ask you for a quick favor. If you find this tutorial helpful, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more SOLIDWORKS content. By liking this video, you're helping us know what types of content you enjoy, and it also helps us reach more people who are interested in learning SOLIDWORKS. Subscribing to Sketch Model Build will ensure that you never miss a new tutorial, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thanks for your support and let's get started with today's tutorial. Let's get acclimated to our assembly. So I've got a gear, a drum, as well as a ratchet and these free spin around this rod. I've set up a distance mate so that they stay at a certain location on the rod. And then I've got this weight and this weight can move wherever we want it to. We're going to be suspending that weight from this drum with a rope that we spool around that drum. And the first thing that we need to do is to edit our drum with a helix for the rope to spool around. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to use a cool trick here. I'm going to put my mouse over this gear and press the tab key and it'll automatically hide those. I can always press shift tab to bring them back. But I'm going to hide those. And then I'm going to edit this drum in context. So I'm going to right click and click edit part. Now in order to have the rope not interfere with the ratchet or the gear, I'm going to offset two planes on either side and then draw the helix between those two planes. So let's create our reference geometry. I'll create a plane here, grab this face by just clicking on it, and I'm going to offset it in by 0.5 millimeters because I'm going to use a rope with a diameter of one millimeter. Click check. We're going to do the same thing again. We'll click reference plane and create a plane based off of this face again offsetting it by 0.5 and we'll click check okay everything's set up now for making our helix we're going to grab this first plane create a sketch on it and i don't have to actually draw anything i'm just going to grab some of the geometry that's already there and click offset entities and offset it by 0.5 I'll zoom in here so you can see that we're going to offset it by 0.5 and we'll click ok it's fully defined we're good to go We'll click the check and then under features we'll select curves with that sketch selected we'll select curves and helix spiral now i just want to make sure that i've got it set at height and pitch i'm going to specify the pitch as two millimeters and then i'm going to specify the height later on by referencing that other plane. And we'll start at zero degrees and we'll keep this clockwise. We may have to modify this later, we'll see. We'll click the check. Okay, we've got our helix and I'm going to change my view so that I'm always seeing this curve. So we're gonna go up to the eyeball up here and click view curves and we can see our helix. If I double click on this helix, it will show me the parameters that were used to make this helix and I'm going to actually double click on this to edit it press the equals button and then choose measure and I can now measure between these two planes this is actually creating an equation in the equation editor we'll click the check it doesn't look like anything changed but we need to rebuild it so we'll click the rebuild and there we go now we have a helix that is defined by the size of the drum and the distance between these two offset planes. We'll exit the, the component and we're ready for our next step, which is to create our new part, which is gonna be the rope. So let's go ahead, go up here to insert components and we're gonna create a new part. And it's got this cursor with the check. I'll click check and it creates our new part and it's fixed that new part to the origin actually. So it's fixed it there. We're going to right click on this and say float all configurations and we're going to change the location by creating some mates for this particular component. The first mate that we're going to do, we'll click the mate button up there. The first mate that we're going to do is going to be an advanced mate and we're going to choose a path mate. 
So the first thing that we want is the component vertex. And we're going to grab the origin of our new part. And then the path that we're going to select is that helix that we just got finished making. So we'll click check there. And we'll get out of the mate dialog. Let's uh, let's move our let's move this around a little bit so that we can move our path mate where we want it to. We're going to create another mate here. We're going to grab the let's see the top plane of our new part, and we're going to grab the top plane of our assembly and click make those coincident. I'll click check and then we're also going to grab the right plane and the right plane of our assembly and we're going to make those parallel so that it stays oriented and doesn't twist around a lot okay now that we've done that we're ready to edit this new part so we're going to right click on the part and edit in context so we can just go into our top plane and create a new sketch orients us right where we want to be. Oh, and we're seeing that we might be on the wrong side of things. That's easily fixable though. We're going to grab a circle from the sketch tab and we're going to just create our circle here. I'm actually going to define this. We're going to define it as one millimeter. I got to type in those millimeters because it, it defaulted to IPS. So we'll click the check. We'll get out of this and we're going to change our units to MMGS because that's what the rest of the assembly is in. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're going to grab this sketch, go to features, and create an extruded boss base so that we can see where we're going. I got all turned around here the way I was looking at this thing. So we're going to create that extrude. And I believe we want to go the other direction. Yeah, we do. Okay. So we're going to go the other direction, and we're going to get out of that part. But we want, let's see where we are. I want to make sure that I'm on the right side. So we want, actually, this part to be over here. So we need to delete some of the mates, or at least suppress them. We're going to suppress this path mate. I'm going to suppress that path mate. And then I'm going to grab this part and move it over onto this side, and then unsuppress that path mate so it puts it right where we want it to and you can already see it working the way we want it to as I move this around you'll see that part spooling up and down or moving at least with the helix now we're gonna go and edit this part again and we're gonna create the spooling feature so the first thing we need to do is click on this helix we can get to that helix from one of the other parts and we're going to go to sketch and this time we're going to choose a 3d sketch and while that helix is still selected we're going to go up here to convert entities and it will make a copy of that helix right in this 3d sketch we don't have to resketch it and we'll exit out of that there we go We've got this new sketch in here let's finish things up by going to feature swept boss base and we're going to choose as our profile for sweeping the profile we used for this extrude already we're going to choose that sketch I'm just using my flyout menu here and then we're going to use a path mate that is this 3d sketch right here and you might have to pay attention to the direction it's going you might have to reverse these buttons here but it looks like it's going the direction that we want it to so we'll click OK and now we've got this spooled feature and I'm actually even going to turn off the helix so I don't see that helix anymore and we'll turn off the plane as well so we can see it look glorious okay we'll close out of this and you'll note that as I turn this the whole thing rotates and it doesn't look like it's actually doing what it's supposed to do we're gonna have to click the rebuild button and it will automatically trim it back up Okay, so as this thing is moving, we're going to have to rebuild it each time we want to see it. All right, let's finish this off by mating up our weight. So we're going to first have to align the weight with the rope, and then we're going to put a rack and pinion mate on there so that as the rope goes up and down, so does the weight, or as the weight goes up and down, 
the drum turns. So let's go ahead and grab our weight. It's part 43 here, and we're going to align it first by grabbing the front plane. So we'll click mate, and we're going to grab, I have to delete that, we're going to grab the front plane of our weight. Let's grab coincident front plane, and then we're going to grab our rope, and we're going to take a look at which it looks like that's going to mate up with the right plane. Although we could actually rotate it. Let's just rotate it so we're doing front plane to front plane. That works just fine. We'll click check. And then we're going to grab the right plane and align that with the right plane. And click check. Okay, so now our weight is aligned with our rope. And while we're in the mate dialog box, and the mate feature, let's just add our rack and pinion. So we're going to go up here to mechanical mates, choose rack and pinion, and we have to get a little bit fancy. We have to dive into the, uh, the geometry of our weight to get a vertical line. So we're going to go in here and under our flyout menu, we're going to grab the revolve, and I'm going to just show this sketch so that I can grab this line in the sketch for our rack. And then for our pinion gear, I'm going to choose this edge right there. And it automatically chooses pinion pitch diameter. I'm going to choose rack travel per revolution, and it automatically chooses that diameter. And I don't know if I need to press the reverse or not. I think I do. So let's click on that, and it pushes the, the weight way down there. We'll double check and make sure it's going the right direction in just a second. We'll click check and check again to get out of the mate dialog box. Now to get this thing in a more uh, and closer to our drum, we can just go in here and suppress this rack and pinion mate for a second, move the weight up here a little bit further, and then unsuppress it. And let's take a look and see how, how it moves. So it looks like it's going the wrong direction, so we'll right click on this rack and pinion edit the feature and we'll reverse it and we're gonna have to do that suppression again so we'll just uns we'll suppress it move this down here unsuppress and we'll see now as we move this weight the the rope is spooling the direction that we want it to so there's only one more thing that we need to do first I'm gonna go into the wait though and hide this sketch so I'm not seeing it so I'm right click on that sketch and hide it now we're going to update our rope so that it extends to the face of the weight so we're going to right click edit in context and with this boss extrude I'm going to right click and say edit the feature and instead of using a blind condition I'm going to say up to a surface and I'm going to choose the surface of that weight. We'll click the check mark and exit out of here. And now we'll see, let's uh, shift tab so that we can see these again. Now we'll see as we move this down and then click the rebuild, our rope extends down to our weight. And it'll not really see it if you move it up, but if you click the rebuild, it will extend to the weight. That's everything. Hope that was helpful.